Mark You're on. Meeting. Okay, let me give you the order of today's meeting. We're starting here right at one, so praise the Lord. Um, we're going to open with a word of prayer, okay? Heavenly Father, we're thankful for this fellowship. We're thankful, Lord God, that you've allowed us to be part of it. Father God, we're not only, uh, we not only rejoice where we're at, we're rejoicing in where we're going to be. And Father God, we know, Lord God, that you've got plans, and we want to, we want to modify our lives in accord with your plans. We don't want you to bless our plans. We want to do yours. Yes. And Father God, we just ask for your wisdom, your guidance, and direction as we meet here together. Yes. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Okay, um, I'm, going to, uh, I'm going to read the uh, membership roster. Then there's going to be some reports, goals, and election of deacons. And then uh, we were going to recognize our VIPs. I'll still recognize them. They were here today, and that was at Alan and Coley. Uh, Shaber, Shaberg, and I, I really believe he brought a, a great message, and uh, I was thankful for that. So first of all, we're going to read our active members. If, if I do not read your name, um, let you're, you're not on our active membership, but you can be. So uh, if you're interested, just let me know. I'm going to read everybody's name, even though I know they're not here, okay? So you know who's on our <coughs> active membership. Uh, Catherine Alby, Michael Alby, Cassandra Cabrera. Caleb Camacho, Chuck Fidroff, you, that, that's your ear. That's where you say here. Yeah. Here? Yeah. Here. Here, here, here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. All right. You got it, Chuck. I got it. Uh, Del, Delmar Fromong. Here. Genevieve Fromong. Here. <laughs> Yo. Eugene Goslin. Morticia Goslin, Bobby Joe Helford, here. Mark Helford, present. I got to be different. <laughs> Pam Hatterley, Paula Holman, here. Helen Lamartine. La don't tell me. No, no, no. I'll, I was going to get it. <laughs> <laughs> Helen Lamartinere, <laughs> Wesley Lamartinere, here. Alicia Little. Here. Hilda Manchester. Cecilia Neal. Here. Wayne Earl Neal. Here. Earl Wayne Neal. Neal. <laughs> Brother Neal. <laughs> Jodel Pisano. Here. Daniel Sander. Carrie Wynn Seacrest. Patricia Pritchett. Pat. Pat Patricia D Patsy Seacrest, <laughs> Colleen Stevens, William Bud Stevens, Dale Williams, Here. Judy Williams, Here. Kelly Young, Here. Maurice Young, yep. and uh, Nancy Calhoun. Here. Okay, and uh, Nancy is a new member. We're very glad to have Nancy and, nice. and Roger as yeah. part of our church. <laughs> Amen. So that being said, I just want to bring this to your attention just so that you are aware. Um, that being said, present right now, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. There's 16 members present. Um, when we advance to general council status, we do have 30 members on our active membership roll, but we will, we will need 20 members present, present. okay, because we will have to sign a charter, okay, okay? and so there, there'll need to be 20 members present, so we really, that's something that we'll really need to motivate. We can conduct business today, but I just wanted you to be aware of that, okay? Well, you better so, tell Skippy can't take a vacation then. Skippy. <laughs> yes, okay. We'll call our meeting to order. We, we do have, uh, how many members did I just say? We're here. 16. 16. Okay. I need to write that down. I know that Mr. Wonderful is on top of that. Okay, 16 members present. Um, we're going to start. One of the things that's been done over the years is, is that uh, business meetings, I think, have been done a little, little loose, a little loose in the past, and there hasn't been minutes that we were able to access. 
And uh, that being the case, we do not have any minutes from last year's business meeting to share with you or the years before. Now here, this is, this is going to change ASAP immediately, meaning that uh, there will be minutes kept of our business meeting, and they will not officially become part of our church records until next year when they are voted in. Are you with me on that? Yeah. And so we will have the meeting today, then we will vote those in, and then uh, they'll be officially part of our, of our meeting. Um, <clears throat> ben, weren't you a member? No, I'm not. Yeah. You're, you're not. You're not. You're not. You didn't fill it out yet. I have to fill okay. It out there. No, I okay. I just want to make sure I didn't miss you. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. So that being said, we do not have a secretary's report. We do keep minutes of our board meetings, and we approve those at the following board meeting. Okay. But as far as our business meeting, which is annually, we will keep those in. The board will not approve those. The church will approve those at the following year's business meeting. Okay? And uh, as it's set up right now, it'll always be the third Sunday evening, and it could be afternoon, but the third Sunday of January. Okay, this happens to be fourth, but it, it is, it'll be in the Constitution and Bylaws that we're putting together the third Sunday we will meet, and so everybody can be prepared and be aware of that even. Okay, um, so it won't be, we won't surprise you with a different day. You know, that is, that will be right within our Constitution and bylaws. Um, we also have the Treasurer's Report, and I'd like you to take, and I, I am going to turn, uh, turn this over to uh, Chuck Fidroff and to uh, uh, Sister Paula to uh, answer any questions if you have any, but uh, take a look at that. And uh, uh, if, you get, if you guys would just be ready to answer if there are questions. Um, as you can see, the, uh, the income for the year, which is on the top section, is broken down into various categories of monies that have come in. <clears throat> and uh, does, uh, are there any questions on the income? Yes, Alicia. What does it, the very bottom on the left-hand side where it says net income and then it shows the loss? What does that mean? Okay, we'll get down to that. Oh. Yeah. That is net income or loss. So that is that's if it had, income. It's, yeah, it if it had be parentheses either. behind it, it, around it, it would be a loss. But as it is, it's a wonderful profit of 81000 Nice. Okay, but as far as the income category, does anybody have any questions on that? Everybody understands that? Everybody sees that? Okay, now let's go to the expense categories. Um, you see that uh, it's broken down into the various uh, expenditures that we have put out. Does anybody have any questions concerning that? What is the, I do, what is the $110 for non I just read that one from Alistair. Uh, the check balanced <laughs> Because uh, somebody okay. bounced a check that donated. Oh, okay, okay, I got you. So that's that's not a bank charge. That's nope. just a, okay. I got you. Okay. What's the mission's short-term expense? We had monthly missionaries that we supported, but uh, if it was just a speaker or a one-time guest speaker, then it goes under the short term because it's not a regular. Is the um, is the monthly mission support uh, a constant? It was, but Pastor Mark's going to change. It, it was. It will be. What we've done is, is, is that we have um, been taking up a special missions offering, putting it in a missions account, doing a, um, an average to discover how much is coming in, how much people have committed to on a monthly basis, and then we are going to establish our missions, missionary support based on that. And that's just a recent thing that we came up with? We, we, did, we started it three, about three, four months ago, yeah. and so, so that we have an accurate figure. And so, so, far and so it's all in it's all in that missions account, and so there is a 
it's not being spent for any other purpose. And so, and then we will establish, we currently, we do not have any missionaries. We are going to be building up our missions, but our, our missionary support list. And uh, primarily, they'll, they'll be local or, or most likely Wyoming missionaries, simply because there is a, this is a limited district, and the missionaries that represent Wyoming need support. Does that mean they need to stay, that they'll stay in Wyoming? No, that it means that they're been going? sent out from Wyoming. What, what happens in the Assemblies of God is this, is, is that uh, missionaries cannot go to various districts and raise support. So if there's a, a missionary leaving the Southern Missouri District, they can't come to Wyoming and raise support. Right. They can only raise support from the Southern Missouri District or other districts that have given them permission <coughs> to be in. And there has to be some kind of a relationship that has allowed them to be there. Wyoming is a very is probably one of the smallest districts, Assembly of God wise, in the United States. We only have thirty something churches. There is more churches in the Southern Missouri district in my section than there is in the whole state of, of Wyoming, yeah. approximately. And so, the Wyoming, due to the missionaries needing our support from Wyoming, it's it's good for us to recognize that and to uh, support that. Like the young lady that was here uh, not too long ago, Anna. And, yeah, is that that's her? Right. and that's the one that we're supporting currently, correct? We're, we don't support any missionaries at this time. Okay. One of the missions organizations that we are going to support, I can tell you right now, is, is uh, Azar Helps. Oh, okay. okay. And, uh, so that, that mission could be a local mission. It doesn't have to be a mission overseas. It could be local. It could be. Okay. Probably, probably what we'll do is put together not only our board, but maybe even a missions committee that we'll, we'll meet to discuss this. Nice. But we don't support the Davises. No. We don't support anybody. At this as of today, right now. Okay. Anyone else have any questions on that? What's the trailer payment? We sold our trailer to uh Aricella, Aricelli and uh, she is making payments on that. Oh, it's an actual trailer house. It is, it is a, uh, a food trailer. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Sorry. What's a missionary love offering? That probably should be under uh, short-term missions, right? Because that's it was uh, when they had a guest speaker. A lot of times they'd take up a special offering for that speaker. <clears throat> like the... Good Samaritan mission. <laughs> and the personal allowance? Parsonage allowance. Oh, That's sorry, I can't see my glasses. Housing allowance I'm sorry. for the pastor. It looked like personal. I'm blind from right here to here. I hear you. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> okay, is there a motion to receive the uh, financial report as presented? So moved. Okay, is there a second to that? So moved. Okay. You, you want to identify the motion more very <coughs> young. I got a second there by Joe Dell. Pisano. Pays no. Pays no, sorry. It's all good. It rolls better. Pisano, no. Everybody used to tease me about pays no. All in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? Same side? No. Okay. All right, we, we will go on, and this is simply uh, our, our, our business meeting format. I'm going to try to do this uh, pretty quickly, but I'm just going to go over to you some of the uh, um, pastor's report or ministry report for 2022. Um, preached 49 times, nine communion services, did two teen challenge services plus the ride for freedom, six baptisms, 39 Bible studies, um, attended 12 church <coughs> business meetings, uh, and 365 video devotions. Uh, one of the, some of the accomplishments of this past year is we've got our new AV system in place, which I'm excited about, and, and hopefully uh, people that, particularly our snowbirds that are out, will be able to be part of our services. Um, we did offer a membership class. Those membership class can be offered again and, and supported. We, will, we do want to work with everybody so that they fully understand what membership is here. Um, we did our first men's overnighter, which I thought went real well. 
and I'm looking forward to some new ones this coming year. But uh, we did our first, uh, at, we did uh, close in our back walkway there. Thank you for the, the help, Joe Dell and, and uh, Butch. But it's it's made a big difference. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, uh, there's no snow blowing in, and, and uh, we've got a clear walkway in the back. We opened a church up for our Spanish-speaking congregation Yay. that is meeting here on Saturday nights. And Esther, do you, do you have anything you'd like to share on that? I think just uh, thanks from Danielle and from the whole crew <coughs> for giving them a place to worship. And he still mentions it on occasion in his sermon. You know, we're so glad for this place that God provided for us. And, you know, we waited a long time and we knew we needed it, and here we are. And they are looking forward to growing too, and they pray for our half of the church too. Amen. 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 And continue to pray for Danielle and the church there. Their church is growing. Uh, there's more Spanish-speaking people be, uh, uh, making, uh, being made aware that it's available. And uh, so continue to pray for them. We, we're, we're so glad. We're so glad to have them as part of, of our family, overall church family. Amen? Amen. And then uh, just uh, we, we meet together for Wednesday night Pentecostal prayer hour. And uh, just want to encourage everybody to uh, to join us if you can. If you can't join us, if you do have needs, let us know. But for those of you that come, I, I, I appreciate that. It's you know we can do a lot of things. We can have fellowships uh, as a church, and we cannot have fellowships as a church and still be a church. We don't have to have meals. We can still be a church. Yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you, there's one thing that we can't stop doing, and that's prayer. Amen. That's right. You know, we need to pray. Yeah. Jesus even said, you know. Uh, you know, this is the house of prayer. It's my yeah. father's house. Instead of a house yes. of prayer, he turned it into a den of thieves. Right. So he even recognized the importance of communication mm -hmm. and sharing with the Lord. I, I really believe, and I really, my goal is, is that Wednesday nights will grow. Yeah. Will grow. We'll that it's not just <laughs> that it's not just a uh, formality. It's not just something that, well, I just don't have time for. It's something well, I'm going to make time for because this mm -hmm. is part of my church. Mm -hmm. and we want to see our church in tune with God. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that, that's one of my desires. Um, as far as pastoral goals for 2023, um, we're going to continue our Bible. Um, uh, one of the things I, I've encouraged you to do and I'm going to continue to encourage you to do is to stay in the Word of God. And uh, uh, that is a motivational thing that I will continue to do on a regular basis. My, my desire is, is that everyone in our church reads the Bible not only daily, but makes a commitment to reading through the Bible on an annual basis. And uh, I believe anybody can do that. You know, you can, uh, you can read 3.2 chapters a day approximately and finish in 365 days. So it, it, it's, it's really not that taxing. And most people can read a lot more than that. But stay in the Word. Stay in the Word. It's a, it is, it, it's a lamp unto our feet. It's a light unto our path. You know, it's sharper than any two-edged sword. Right. It will not return void, right? right. Amen. It builds our faith. Amen. Okay. Um, I, I did have, and I still do have, some uh, Bible reading record sheets that you can take advantage of. And uh, if you want to just keep records, it's, it, it's nothing. It doesn't tell you what to read. It just gives you the opportunity to mark off that you did read it. That's what I do. I've done it for years, and it's been very really helpful to me. Um, Education opportunities. We want to continue to offer a Bible study on uh, on Sunday mornings. Encourage encourage you to attend. Encourage others to attend. It is an opportunity to uh, interact with others as we study the Bible together, and I think that's a positive thing. And I uh, one of the things that we're going to be offering here, and I think that there's a lot of people that need to learn, um, is the gifts of the Spirit class. Amen. And uh, we're going to go. We're going to be go, going over the nine gifts of the spirit, the power gifts of the spirit, and uh, reflecting on those and how important they are to be in operation in the church. And uh, one of the, part, part of the problem today, I think, is just plain ignorance. And ignorance not meaning stupidity, right. but not a, a, a lack of awareness. Right. And so offering that and making that available to you. I'm also currently am I. I'm a, uh, one of the representatives, uh, national representatives for Living Free Training, which is uh, support group training uh, for uh, um, churches to implement non-residential help for those dealing with life-controlling problems or other issues. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'd like to offer some Living Free groups here 
which could be for you might you might be dealing with it. everybody most everybody just dealing with some issue or life controlling issue. Right. It could be overeating. It could be uh, could be an anger issue. It could be drugs. Could be alcohol. Could be these things that people are struggling with. We want to provide an, an opportunity for them to gain victory. So these are some things I'd like to get started this coming year. Um, the uh, one of the things that my wife and I have done over the years, and we've tried to uh, share that with with you as well, is is that. Uh, uh, it, and I say this uh, as a part of a confession, is, is, is that I don't like to fast. I don't, I, my body doesn't. My flesh doesn't. I like food. <laughs> but uh, I, I also believe that there's some importance to that. Amen. It's importance to deny the flesh. And uh, what, what, we've, what we have designated in, in our family over the years and also through the Teen Challenge Ministry is the first Monday of every month would be a day of prayer and fasting. And so I'd like to do that again. It's just to emphasize a, a time of prayer, a time of fasting. And uh, we, we don't, uh, you know, we don't say you can't do this, you can't do that, can't eat this, can't do that. It might be a, a meal, it might be a day, it might be a whole day, it might, mean, it might mean something. But just the fact that you're not letting the flesh have control. You know, the spirit and you're submitting to God during that time in prayer. Amen? Amen. All right. The uh, children and youth, you know, one of the things that we want to do is we want to minister to our youth, and we want to minister to our children, and we want to make sure that there's um, opportunities for them to grow in Christ and have the foundation stones of the faith developed in their lives. And so we're going to put some plans together to make that happen. Okay, and so that is something uh, I believe 2023 is going to bring into fruition uh, as we go forward. Um, we want to encourage your kids as they are able and old enough to attend Christian camp I, I know uh, Caleb has gone several times. I know it's been a real positive experience for those who have gone. And, uh, and uh, one of the things I, I'd like to do and make a commitment as a church is, is that uh, finances will never be an issue. You know, right. I can't go, I can't afford it. We as a church step up and we say, this is an important part of our church. We're going to make sure that any young person that wants to go to camp can go to camp. Amen. My, kids, uh, my kids got baptized in the Holy Ghost. You know, at at Christian camp, you know, and uh, uh, called into ministry. Uh, they've they've heard these things. These things have happened. Separation and focus on the things of God sometimes can be a real positive experience. Amen. Amen. Okay. So, um, uh, worship. We're we're. I, I I thought worship went well today. We we're continuing to develop. We're continuing to grow. We want to provide an environment in our worship experience that uh, lets people believe they've entered in the very presence of God. Amen? Amen. I, want, I want God's glory. I want the Shekinah glory here. I want, I, want, I want us to sense that we're not just singing songs, right. that we're entering into the Holy of Holies and experiencing the presence of God. Amen. And so we're going to develop that, and we're going to grow as a, as a church in that Amen. arena. We're thankful for those who are putting forth the effort to make that a, a vehicle for all of us. Um. Preaching, of course, I, I, my goal is to see, continue to seek God's direction and anointing, um, and uh, certainly to have those who, who stand behind this pulpit uh, to be individuals that have a desire to seek God and, and to present His truth to you. Amen? Mm -hmm. And then uh, I'm going to continue my daily video broadcasts. I've been doing that now for a couple of years, and uh, encourage you to log on to that. They're short, they're short but they're fresh. <laughs> they're, they're right off the grill. <laughs> they, they might be might be a little burnt at times, but they're right off the grill. <laughs> and then uh, Brother Wayne and I had talked about this, and and uh, and I, I really believe this is the case too. Is is that for some reason in the evenings, a lot of people get filled with the Holy Ghost during evening services. Yep. And so uh, one of the things that we had talked about is putting together. An evening service, and it's not it, it, not necessarily telling everybody you need to be here, but to be focused on seeking the Holy Spirit yes. Yes. and experiencing the fullness of the Holy Spirit in one's life. The baptism of the Holy Ghost, the initial evidence of speaking in other tongues, and, yes. and learning about it and, and encountering that yes. on a Sunday evening. And uh, uh, be open to that. I've seen God move in mighty ways. Mm -hmm. Mighty ways. Yes. I've seen people that have been seeking it for years. I've seen them. I've seen them filled with the Holy Ghost 
I've seen him knocked down. Yes, <laughs> amen. By the power of God. I've, I, God moves. He still moves today. Amen. Mm -hmm. And uh, baptism, uh, we want to offer water baptism to those in need on a regular basis. And we're not necessarily, it's not available today. <laughs> but, uh, we're, we'll, you, we'll, use the, uh, we'll use the river down there. And uh, Brother, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll have Brother Wayne give me a help anyone that wants to be baptized during the winter. <laughs> uh, he has one of those augers and he'll drill a hole and uh, we'll dip you down in. <laughs> but anyhow, uh, anybody can walk on the water now. <laughs> Can't you just throw them in the snow? That's frozen water. Well, that's an idea. I think maybe we should baptize you again. <laughs> but, all right. Um, uh, communion. You know, sharing sharing with one another as a as a memorial uh, for what Christ did for us on the cross of Calvary. Amen. Mm -hmm. We didn't save ourselves; He saved us yes. uh, for by what He did for us. And so we want to offer that. We're offering that this coming Sunday. We want to. We, our goal is to offer that at least once a month. You know, for us to participate with one another. Mm -hmm. um, our church status as brother. Uh, I, I'm I'm so glad that uh, brother Allen is supportive of this. Um, I've been a little concerned about it because this church has been in existence for 20 years and there's been different populations. This church has been uh, populated in the past. In fact, there's times I've heard that there's, there's been over 60 people here and yet this church has never advanced to general council status. Um, the uh, district status, when it was established, was established only, only as a temporary status. It's a temporary status for growing churches so that they can get to that point where they can be independent. They can be a general council church. This church has never breached that, uh, that goal, so to speak. We've never passed on from district status to general council status. Our goal is to do it this year. We need 20 active members. Currently, we have 30. And uh, so membership is not going to be an issue. We have... There's a few hoops we need to jump through. There's some articles of incorporation. There's, a, there's constitution and bylaws. There's various things that we need to put into place. I, we have started that process. So that is the direction that we're going. And uh, we want you, you know, all of you that are members to be charter, charter members of that, uh, of our general council status once we transition into that. that Anybody, did you have any questions on that? Everybody understand what I'm talking about on that? Okay. And then... Uh, our outreach, um, we're going to, uh, again, uh, we, we, we want to stay missions-minded. We're going to stay missions-minded. And uh, we, we are establishing our missions budget based on, uh, on the, the commitment of, the, of our, our membership and our adherence. And uh, we are going to implement that as soon as possible. We're breaking that down, and we're going to put together our support. But our, all of missions that we've taken up for the last three months has been an evaluation of, how, of the commitment that's in a missions account that's going to all go to missions. Every mission dollar that comes in during our missions offering is in that fund. It will never be used. We could say, well, wait a second, we just blew a pipe and we need to repair it. The missions fund cannot be touched. Okay? The missions fund is the, it's the only account that we have separate from our general account, our general fund. Okay? It's our missions account, but it cannot be touched. Um, that's why, uh, by the way, in case you knew, how many of you remember Jim Baker? How many remember him went, going to prison? Mm -hmm. yeah. You know why he went to prison? Misappropriation of funds. Mm -hmm. Misappropriation of funds is when you're given a gift, designated, you receive it as such, and you don't use it for what it's designated for. Mm -hmm. Okay, And we as a church will be faithful to, to live according to those standards. Missions mm -hmm. being our designated um, we'll have some, over, the, over time, we'll have some uh, uh, special speakers, and we will expand our mission support, and we will establish this with our board and with a, maybe potentially a committee, uh, whether or not we want to raise monthly support for individual missionaries or whether we want to take on more individual missionaries. And so that's something that we'll have to look in and, and decide what we want to do as a church as we grow financially. Our AV media ministry, I believe it's very important. God bless you guys. Take some cake home with you. <laughs> Bye. Our, our, our AV ministry is, uh, is something that's very important because we have a whole lot of individuals that are 
are snowbirding uh, down in down in Arizona that still want to stay part of our church. Uh, Hilda, which is Morticia's mother, she lives in Massachusetts. She had to move back here. She wanted to be a member of our church and continue to be part of our church. And so this opens the doors for them. Also, it is an outreach it's so that we can reach out beyond our walls. Amen? Amen. Amen? Okay, so everybody understands that. That's our goal, and that's what we have there. We're continuing to upgrade it. I wanted to introduce him. I just didn't get a chance to today. It was David Otterman. He is, uh, he, he is a member at Emmanuel, but he is a, uh, uh, he's a computer tech, video tech, uh, AV guy, and he has been instrumental in helping us set everything up, and he was here today for our service. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's really working in, uh, as a mentor for Judy and, and giving her some tutelage. And, and she's, uh, she's learning a whole lot. And I, I think she'll be able to help teach others as well as some of the things that she's gleaning. So, um, Also, one of the things that we want to do is uh, not only have these available on Facebook, but upload our videos to a YouTube site so that individuals can access those. They can access them on the TV. They can access them. Um, on a regular basis, they can pull them up and there'll be archives of the services. Okay. So that is, uh, that is one of our, our goals as well. Our building and grounds, um, we'll remodel and repair the church in needed areas. Uh, you know, there's various things that occur for church of this age over a period of time, and we're trying to stay on top of that. We want our, our landscaping and our plowing and everything to reflect that we care for this property. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. And so uh, we want individuals to know that we respect it, we care for it, we believe it's we believe it's the, the house of God, so to speak, where we meet to worship God, and uh, we want it to be reflected from our building, from our from our property, as people see see this place. So, um, and, and we need as many people involved in that. It's not a, it's not a one man show by any means. Um, it's yes. So that's no. going to be all volunteer work. And people from our church. Not I'm, I'm hoping. I'm hoping that being the case, um, the uh, uh, where where we have enough individuals within our church that are saying, you know what, I'll be part of this and, and uh, call the ministry. I was just reading today in Exodus about uh, God's anointing. I, I I think his name was uh, Be Be Belzalay or something, but he uh, he was anointed of God. To work, to do the work of the tabernacle, mm -hmm. and it was a calling. It was a, it was an anointing that God had given him to do something. He wasn't actively involved in the priestly work. He was involved in, in putting together uh, and building things and putting these things together because that's where, how he was anointed, and uh, to to operate in the realms of our anointing, and also to to divert to diversify so that there's not. A, you know what they say? They say that five percent of the church does ninety five percent of the work. Uh -huh. And uh, that, of course, that's not really a healthy church. A, a healthy church is when, uh, you know, 95% of the church do 95% of the work, right? That we, we're all in it together and we're all willing to help. I, I think that's already been demonstrated, especially, I mean, you know, the amount of snow that we get. Ben's been doing it. Brother Wayne's been doing it. Dell's done it. I'm sure, I'm, I, I know I probably left out other people, but it's just, miraculous that they just show up and do it and it's been a blessing amen and we've we've seen it done landscaping with uh with dan and mike and, and others right. um we also as you can see as as we grow and if everybody was here that uh not only that we have on our membership roles but that's been an adherence of, of, over a period of time we would not have room for that you know we can only see 60 something people in our church we already have more than that that are coming on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. uh, last week it was pretty full, and I, I was laying there, couldn't sleep, and so I was just trying to. All I I, I counted twenty nine people that weren't here, uh -huh. you know, in my head, yep. you know, and uh, so it's <clears> just <throat> like, uh, um, so we need to start thinking. You know, we're not going to tear out walls or anything, but we need to start thinking of expansion as to how we need to do that, how the Lord would have us to do that, so that we can be prepared. They say that once the church is 95% full, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, uh, maybe you guys have heard it before. Mm -hmm. Once a church is, has reached a certain level, it'll stop growing because right. people will feel that it's overcrowded. Right. You can knock yeah. down that wall and expand the building. <laughs> yeah, I can give you a little bit of, I'll give you a little feedback on that, Dale. We cannot do anything to this building no. because we are grandfathered in code-wise. Mm -hmm. If we do any 
modifications, we lose that grandfather clause. Right. Amen. And so what we would have to do would all have to be on an additional building besides this. Oh, and wow. so, and then uh, you get to, for example, you get to the, you know, most of you know where Emmanuel Bible Church is. They, they, they have a sprinkler system. They had to, code-wise, put a sprinkler system there. You go to Morningstar Baptist, they didn't have to because they're an older building and a grandfather did. Mm -hmm. But once you start building and putting the, put new things in, you have to fall into the, the codes. They're, they're not just local codes, they're state codes that have been accepted. Right. So uh, Butch knows a lot about codes, mm -hmm. you know, because he works with the, the electrical codes. And so, uh, but that's just something for us. It's not, it's, it's not, it's not anything that's going to hinder us. It just needs to be something we need to be aware of and cooperate mm -hmm. with. You know, uh, um, so uh, we want to continue our men's fellowship. We had, Wesley was talking about, you know, maybe us doing a uh, camp out, a men's camp out. Yeah. I think that's a cool idea, mm -hmm. you know, and just spending some time together with men doing things that men like to do. Mm -hmm. And not to say that women don't like to do them either, but uh, we like to shoot, we like to, you know, we like to <laughs> like to fish, we like to do, we like to do certain things. That, uh, and uh, there's a lot of ladies that do as well, but we're men. And your women talked to Bob and Joe about fishing. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, and then our women's fellowship, we're thankful for them. We're thankful for their participation, their interaction with one another. You know, for some reason, it just seems that women have an easier time of getting together and fellowshipping, and men it's sort of hit or miss. And, uh, you know, we'd like to have some things that we can do on a consistent basis and really develop uh, some relationships as men. I really thought that we got to, you know, I had, uh, 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 Butch was sharing in a board meeting. He was saying, you know what, I got to know some of these guys just in that overnight mm -hmm. that yeah. I never really knew. Yeah. I never really knew. Yeah. It was just me yeah. ministering on a, ca you know, mm -hmm. talking to people on a casual basis and just sharing with them. I think those things are, are a positive thing. Uh, our, our nursery, we, we want to establish that. We want we want people with small kids not to come and feel as if they're intruding, right. but to feel as if they can participate. Um, right now, I know that uh, Autumn brings a couple of smaller children, and, and uh, as, you, as you've probably seen, Nancy or Roger, um, uh, they're not together because one of them is watching those children so that Autumn can attend. So we want to have right. something in place. And, and that, this is all going to be also part of our expansion as well, so that we're, we're meeting all of these needs and taking care of these situations. I'd like to do some church outings, possibly as a church group. Um, one of the things that we did, and thank, thank you, Maury, for making that possible for us, is, is that we went to the Oregon Trail Center there, and uh, there was a bunch of us that went. It was a special time. But it's, it's just spending time with one another and doing things together and uh, that help us build relationships. Amen? Because mm -hmm. I think the uh, fellowship meals, too, um, like, you know, are, are very helpful for that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, vacation Bible School. Uh, one of the things that's been done in the past, and uh, we'll maybe potentially do it in the future, is, is that uh, this church and fellowship has linked up with Morning Star Baptist, and uh, there's been a joint uh, uh, VBS uh, group that's put together, and, and so that's something that we can work on as well uh, as we grow together. Okay, this is, you know, I, I almost, I, uh, you know how those pictures pop up on your Facebook you know, as to what happened like one year ago. You know what popped up on my Facebook today? Mm -hmm. Me standing by a moving van. Mm -hmm. <laughs> in my driveway in Raytown, Missouri. It was it was the day before we left. You know, the left. And so that's exactly a year ago today. And so uh, but we're we're we want you to know we're you're you're our family and we, we enjoy being here. My aspirations don't expand beyond that in Wyoming. You know, this is our you know, certainly the Star Valley. This is where God's called me. This is where I want to be, and this is uh, this is where uh, this is where we'll be raptured together, <laughs> Lord willing. So I I just want you to know we're we're glad to be here. You're part of our family. And you're an important part of our lives, each and every one. I'm sure I speak for you as well. Um, as we look over this, uh, one of the things that we've done, and there's it, this to this year in the future. And once we become a general council church, these things are going to be done differently. Okay, uh, right now, um, there they it isn't up to uh, a vote of a nominating committee because we don't have a nominating committee. We we aren't for board members. Our, 
board members will serve for one year, and then a nominating committee chosen from the membership of the church will provide nominees that will be voted on. No one will be running against anybody else. It is just a, a vote of ratification or rejection. Okay? Um, this year, it's more of an appointment, simply because of our status. <laughs> and uh, due to that fact, um, we've, Butch is going to continue to serve as one of our deacons, and Chuck is going to serve as one of our deacons. They have, and I think uh, both of them, I, I just want to give accolades, they've both done a great job. Mm -hmm. They've both done a great job. They have a heart for the church. They love you. They love what God is doing here. And we have asked, and I'd like you to ratify, I'd like you to ratify him tonight. We have asked Brother Wayne Neal to also serve on our board. Yay. And so uh, if, uh, if, if, if you're all in agreement with that, could you just give Wayne a, a hand? Wayne, uh, Wayne has committed his life to being part of our fellowship, both Wayne and Cecilia, and uh, I believe he'll be a great addition for this Amen. Amen. Um, <coughs> our, uh, new We're going we're gonna to finish here by before 2 o'clock, so uh, is there any, uh, any additional business or anything that anybody has, any questions you might have concerning our fellowship here and concerning the future of the church? Um, so I just have two questions on stuff that you've already covered. Um, so the Gifts of Spirit class, do you know when you'll be offering that again? No. And the Living um, Free Support class? No. Okay. The, there's no dates on those yet. Okay. One of the things that we can do, we can do a Living Free seminar here, which we can invite other churches and other people to participate on that. And uh, once you attend the Living Free seminar, you would be qualified. To, it, once you go through the seminar and then go through the group, that would qualify you to be a facilitator. And you'll let so us that you know when that's all room. happening? Oh, I oh, sure yeah. will. <laughs> we'll try to get all these things in order. And, of course, we've, we've got a whole lot of things that we want to see happen and do. And, uh, but uh, we're just going to uh, continue trying to do as much as we can for the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Anything else on that? Okay, um, our next scheduled business meeting, according to uh, what we're what we're focusing on, Constitution and bylaws wise, that we're trying going to try. Brother Brother Allen said that you know it's going to take a while. We, what we have to do as a district church, we need district recommendation to the general council. The district, of course, is in here in Casper. That's the HQ. General Council HQ is in Springfield, Missouri. Um, and for us to become an affiliated church. We need district approval, and so to get district approval, there's a few things that the district requires. And so we're going through those hoops. Um, our proposed constitution bylaws has to be ratified by the Presbytery Board of the Wyoming um, Network. And uh, what I what I've been in communication with Brother Allen. He did. I did send him a rough draft. He did look it over. He did uh, suggest some things that uh, might be some concerns, and uh, they're, they're, they're not anything that changes anything that would uh, probably have any effect on anybody's opinion here. It has to do more with uh, um, um, what's the word I want? Uh, just uh, uh, crossing your T's and dotting your I's, so to speak. And uh, so I sent him back another draft that's going to be brought before their presbytery board and then and then each each one will then we'll be all able to look it over of course it'll include the 16 statements fundamental of truth all all assembly of god constitution and bylaws do and uh it does it does share our relationships and but it does give some guidelines for our conduct as a church as we go forward also articles of incorporation and then having 20 members active that will sign that list what he'll have to do is probably come out here or send a representative, a presbyter, a representative to come out here to an additional meeting that we'll have uh, where we will vote on becoming a general council church, which I'm sure we all want to do. I mean, I, I would I would think why anybody would be opposed to that. And then uh, the uh, he 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 had said, you know, it's it's not going to be. It's, it, it's not, you know, it's not going to be tomorrow, but he, he thinks that we should be able to get this done maybe by May, you know, if we, if we stay on top of this and keep working toward that. And so, um, 
and, and of course we, we need to get, you know, one of the things, and I, I, I've not tried to rush this, I, I, I've even shared with some individuals, I'm not looking for just 20 members, I'm looking for 20 committed members. I'm looking for 20 members that are just not going to sign a piece of paper, 20 members that are going to be committed to the church right. and, and uh, over a period of time. And I, I think that's what we're seeing, and we, I think we have that at this time. You know, we have 30 individuals that have made that statement. There's, there's some that are out of state and unable to attend. Our church is a little unique. I shared that with Brother Allen. He understands that just simply because of our snowbird uh, type situation. Right. Um, it's great to see the visitors coming yeah. and, and them saying that uh, they're going to be back. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. And that, that, that blesses my heart. It blesses my heart because they're seeing something here that, that they're, they're recognizing as God. And they want to be part of it. And that's that's an encouragement. They see it in, in you and I, you know, and, and our interactions. It's great to have uh, this this lady uh, Suzanne that was here with Nan. I don't know if you know it or not. She's Dave Smith's sister. Really. Uh, and so uh, and they live in Afton, and uh, they're very happy here. They like it here, you know, and. Uh, and then uh, it, it's great to have Jerry and Sharon. They came over from the United Pentecostal Church, mm -hmm. and uh, and they they feel very welcome here. I do. And uh, it's it's great to have Jerry and Sharon here. And mm -hmm. So we're seeing it. And then Larry, uh, Larry uh, uh, Brooks, who's been mm -hmm. coming on a, on a regular basis, and of course Brian, Big Brian, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, they they just they they feel they feel welcome here. That's what right. they feel. So I I'm, I'm encouraged by that. I'm glad to see Autumn coming on a regular. basis. Yeah, yes, and uh, that that's that's a that's a blessing. Uh, amen. 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 All right. Um, anyone else? Anyone? Yeah, well, brother Wayne. Brother, would you mind explaining about the sections in our state? And our yeah, there's various state? there's various section there's sections in our state, and in each section has a presbyter. Um, mm -hmm. And Kelly, you might even know more than, about this than I. Um, but there is a uh, we are in uh, a section that would include like Marbleton, uh, that would include uh, Pinedale, Pinedale, that would Pinedale, go down Marbleton, to Evanston, Kemmerer, uh, Rock Springs. It would include all of Lincoln County, and then yeah. um, we are the only Assembly of God church <coughs> in uh, in Lincoln County, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we are the only Assembly of God church in Lincoln or Teton County. Right. Wow. Yeah, I so uh, it, there's a lot, there's a lot of people here that can be reached, right. you know, for the kingdom. That's but right. uh, they tried to, they tried to open a church in Jackson, and it was, uh, it was pastored there for a while. But they, uh, they actually, uh, uh, they couldn't afford it. <laughs> you know, be on, right. you know, yeah. be a perfect right. What's that? The expenses were prohibited. Yeah. Right. Now the the closest Assembly of God Church to us. Would probably be Marbleton. Marbleton. Mm -hmm. okay. Here in the Wyoming district, and um, you, you can get it if you went to Idaho Falls. I guess that that might might be a little. Idaho Falls, Soda Springs, uh, uh -huh. Pocatello. But that's total different. Wow. That's a total different district. Yep. Mm -hmm. And right. so we, as far as our district is concerned, it would be Marbleton. That's and actually the district that we came from. The Soda Springs area, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh -huh. And then uh, the. Uh, the Marbleton Church has an interim there right now. Okay. Did you know that, Kelly? Uh, no, I haven't talked to them recently, oh, but I knew they had the call. Yeah, they have an interim that was part of that. He, he probably was there. He was raised up in that church. Okay. And uh, that's... Is that your name? No, 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 but they had visited no. him and his... Oh, I'll tell you this. They said they had Chi Alpha background. So okay. I don't know if you know if that helps understand mm -hmm. who they are. But... Uh, this, just to answer Wing's question, um, okay. the sections, each section has a presbyter right. that represents that section. Those presbyters meet with the district superintendent right. and, and are the governing board for the state. Okay. Um, the, uh, uh, we, we're, we're so, you know, we, we're, we're quite a ways. Uh, I think our presbyter, his name is Zach, and he pastors now in uh, uh, Rock Springs? No, it's, it's Lyman. Lyman. Lyman or, or Mountain, Mountain View. Mountain View. I think it's Mountain View. 
and, and that's quite a ways from here. And so, uh, but there's really no, um, it, it doesn't affect us as a church. Right. It, basically, the section is, is more for the pastor's fellowship, right. you know, in interaction. What it does have, though, is a representative who's supposed to represent the churches that he covers at district level. Okay. You know, and then when they that, have, when they have their, uh, you have a general conference for Miami. Mm -hmm. Have a district. We have a district council every year, and at those district councils, certain of those presbyters are elected. And uh, I think they're elected. I, I I don't think they're all elected the same year. I think they might be elected for a two-year term, and it might be staggered, so that different different ones are voted on in different years. Uh, we, as a district church, uh, I, I I'm a I'm general council affiliated. I'm ordained in the Assembly okay. of God, so I'm general council affiliated. And so I have a vote whether I'm here or not, you know, right. as long as I'm part of the Wyoming district. Right. <coughs> as a church in the Wyoming district, we also can have representatives. Uh, Kelly's got credentials in the assemblies, and so she has a voting she has a voting presence. And then uh, um, we uh, usually my wife, when she accompanies me, she represents the church. You know, on right. behalf of the half of the church. But uh, we have a say in what goes on at district level. Uh, be aware that uh, nothing changes doctrinally. Right. So, I mean, it's not a place where we're discussing doctrine. That is all, um, right. that there, it's unamendable. <laughs> you know, we, we, have some, right. we have some things that are, are constitutionally um, sound even, and are covered at a general. The district could never say, hey, we, there's 16 statements, we want to just have 15. General mm -hmm. counsel step in, that's not going to happen. That's great. You know, so we have we we have that covering in place. It, it is absolutely essential to have a covering like that. Yes. yes. Otherwise, <laughs> what you get is a whole lot of uh, people going left, people going right. Mm -hmm. people going well, right. I think that yeah, it'd be like a mess hanging out here. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> and anything that happens, there's sometimes there's things that happen policy wise um, that. Uh, uh, sometimes we may agree with them, sometimes we may not. It's, they usually have nothing to do with our our, uh, our, our doctrinal position. Right. Right. Just just different policies, and so um, we will uh, we address those and deal with those. Alan is so personable. He's so personable. I've met with him. I've talked to him. He's 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 very real. He's very real. He doesn't put on any pre pretense. He doesn't pretend to be anybody he's not. And uh, we appreciate that. So, and he's very open, and uh, it, it, I almost think that there's some districts that want to control churches. They want churches to stay district level because they 